Welcome to this series of six short videos which make up the lesson on introduction to market structures. Market structures are a really important concept in the micro course. In fact, the, the contents of this lesson really underpin an awful lot of what you will be learning in the second half of your A-level microeconomics. So we're going to give you in the first video here an introduction to the concept, why it matters. Uh, and then we're going to go on to look at each of the four major market structures, followed by finally a brief evaluation of the market structure model. So let's start with an exercise to recall some of what you already know about what we mean by markets. What I'd like you to do, please, is on a piece of paper or on your worksheet, note down any words that you can think of from economic terminology that you've learnt that you're associated with the concept of markets. See if you can think of at least five. Pause the video, give yourself about a minute, maximum two minutes, and then restart when you're ready. Okay, so let's have a look at five ideas that we came up with. And the five words that came to us first were revenue, costs, elasticities, uh, technology involved in markets and consumer tastes, but you might well have different ones to us. That's absolutely fine. Um, now, let's go on and then think, why are we interested in market structures? I said that this is a key part of the microeconomics course. So why? Why is it such a key part or such an important fundamental part of the course? Well, it's basically because the structure, variations in the structure between different types of market and the businesses in different types of market have a very big effect on the conduct of those businesses, or the way that they behave and their performance in the economy. And those will determine all manner of things, including their prices and profits, the way they deal with customers and with suppliers, with employees, uh, how much tax they pay to the government and a variety of other things that you're going to be learning about later on this year. So now let's break each of those down a little further, looking at the structure first. So the structure of the market is affected by the demand and supply, the levels of demand, who demand comes from, the means of supply, how many different firms are in the market and so on. That has an impact on the aims and objectives of the firms in that particular market. And, then, and finally, in turn, those aims and objectives have an influence on the way that the business performs in its market. So how can we use this model, this structure, conduct and performance model? What is there that might cause differences between different businesses? Um, and I can tell you that they're certainly not all the same. So what I'd like you to do, please, is another exercise for you here to look at what factors you can think of that might cause variations in the structure, the conduct and performance of different businesses. Think about some businesses that you're familiar with. Um, write those down either on a separate piece of paper or on your worksheet if you're using one. Uh, pause the video while you're doing that and then restart when you're ready. Okay, some of the ideas of factors that cause differences. First of all, let's take structure. Okay, we could think about how much market share each firm has in the, in the market. We could think about whether their products differ between different firms or are they all the same? Secondly, if we think about conduct, can think about uh, do firms work in isolation? Is it just one firm in the market or are there several firms there? If there's more than one, are their actions interdependent? Let's explain for a moment what interdependent means. Does that, that means that each ex firm existing in the market has to consider what the others will do about their pricing, about their supply, about the type of goods they're producing before they make their own decisions. And that will lead us on to the third point there about conduct. How do they actually compete? For example, it may not only be on price. They might be thinking of other ways of competing. And then in terms of performance, do they seek to profit maximise? That's a term you might remember from learning about rational businesses back at the beginning of your microeconomics course. There's an economic assumption that businesses choose to profit maximise. 
but not necessarily all of them do. Secondly, are they satisficers? What that means is they aim for a satisfactory or an adequate result, but not necessarily the best possible result that they could achieve. Now, efficiency is also something that you probably remember something about. We talk about how productively efficient or how um, allocatively efficient they are. Or we might talk finally about dynamic efficiency. How much dynamism is there in this particular market? Uh, is there a flow of new ideas and innovation that comes through all the time or not? Is it fairly static? So to start with the first uh, with the first of those three parts of the model, we're going to think about structure. What do we mean by market structure? And as it says on the slide here, it's a description of the characteristics that buyers encounter and sellers face in a given industry. So we're thinking about the two different sides of that demand and supply diagram, the demand coming from the buyers and the supply coming from the sellers. Let's work through the, the seven features that are described here, starting at the top. So the first one is about the number of firms. So some markets may have only one firm operating in them, whereas uh, and other markets may have a few and still more may have lots and lots and lots. Secondly, the power and the quantity of buyers. Where does the demand come from? That's from us as the consumers. Is there a mass market with lots of people wanting to buy versions of the same thing? Or is it a niche market where there's just a, a, a very small number of people looking for a very particular uh, type of product? That might lead us on to the degree of product differentiation. How much choice do we buyers have in the market? Uh, uh, is there just one type of product which is really pretty similar, doesn't matter which producer you go to, or are there lots of different variations? The businesses in particular will be concerned about their profitability and the market structure determines the profitability for the businesses and the margin, the profit margin that they can earn over and above their costs. Later in the course, you'll be learning uh, about how to use graphs to show that. So a part of that is going to be to do with their costs. The next point, the nature of costs, and there's going to be a lot of work to do later on about that. Coming back to the consumers. Is the customer or consumer loyalty, is this a feature in this particular market? You know, do consumers prefer one particular producer to another very strongly? Um, how do they gain that customer loyalty? What does it mean for the firms? And then finally, the market share, which is measuring the size of each of the different competitors in the market, each of the different sellers or suppliers. Now, we're going to do another exercise here you're going to have a 60 second challenge. So on the next slide, you'll see a number of different businesses listed for you. Your task is quickly to pair up the businesses that you think are similar to each other. So there are, I think, eight businesses, four pairs for you. And then try and think of one difference between each of those four different pairs. And use those variables that we've just covered in the previous slide to help you. So have that sheet on which you've written those down to hand so that you can use that as a guide. OK, so. Here are your eight different businesses. I'm going to ask you to pause the video, but only for 60 seconds, pair them up and then think of a difference between the two in each pair and restart when you're ready. Well, you probably got this. Here are the pairs for you. Esso and Shell, the two lettuce growers, but in different uh, areas, the two food retailers with the convenience store and Tesco's and the hairdressers, the little local hairdresser and the Tony and Guy is the big sort of national chain. So you probably got this. But then why does this matter? What is, or what's the significance of that? Well, let's take the lettuce grower first. Does the lettuce in Weirdale compete with a lettuce grown in Annick. Are they going to be competing directly with each other or not? So we could suggest that quite likely the Weirdale farmer can grow as many lettuces as he wants or as he can, and that's not going to affect the sales and profits of the grower in Northumberland. So ultimately, the explanation lies in the uh, within the explanation of the structure of the market. Take Shell and Esso as the next example. They 
clearly compete with one another and they will try and influence the price that each other charge at the pump. So every time Shell want to change their prices, they'll have to have in mind if we put our price up, what will ESO do and what impact will that have on demand in our market? Now, Tony and Guy probably do in a small town or the towns that they're based in compete with other small hairdressers for business in that location. But that does depend on the location of the businesses because uh, a little local hairdresser in a village high street probably doesn't have to compete with Tony and Guy who tend to be um, located in large towns. So the structure of the marketplace influences who competes, who they compete with, what their aims and goals are and the potential rewards that they can earn. So we're going to finish up for this video by looking at some data um, and <clears throat> thinking about how we could use this in analysing the market structure. So we've got here the data for number of hairdressing and other beauty treatment salons in the UK for over a 10 year period from 2008 to 2017. And if you look at this, what will probably immediately strike you is the, the very large increase between 2015 and 2016, more than 10,000 extra salons opening up uh, just in that year. So here's the question for you. What factors might account for that, that very large increase? Um, look back at those seven characteristics of a market structure that we considered a few slides back. Again, have that list in front of you. And what I'd like you to do is see how many reasons relating to those seven characteristics you can think of that might have caused that increase in, in the numbers. Pause the video for a couple of minutes, think through that and then restart when you're ready. OK, so let's think through what those possible reasons could be. It may have been to do with the uh, disposable income of the buyers. In other words, the power of the buyers, the power of the consumer. Or it might have been to do with the businesses, the suppliers or sellers costs. If there was a reduced rent in certain area, then it might be easier for them to set up. Another idea is that probably each of these sellers is offering slightly different services. If we think about the nature of the business, some of the salons will be uh, just straightforward barbers. Some of them will be offering maybe men's and women's hairdressing. Others might be focusing just on nails, just on eyebrows, other beauty treatments and so on. And then finally, it could be that there's actually an increase in the number of people qualifying as barbers and hairdressers and beauty professionals. And so that's causing an increase in the number of businesses available. Now, you've quite likely come up with other reasons, other thoughts that haven't been listed here. That's fine. Um, but the key thing that we want you to take away from this is that by investigating market structures, we can answer questions such as these. We can look at a piece of data and start to analyse reasons, analyse effects of changes in the data. So that brings us to the end of the introduction uh, session for this lesson on introduction to market structures. The next four short videos are going to take you through the four main market structures.